I'm going to lose my house, and there's not a thing I can do about it. Ah, but there is, Helen. You can fight for it. So, we have to figure out a way to get Halstead to give you more money for your homes. How are we going to get them to give us more money for our homes? Very simple, Mrs. Ivanko. We give them a fair shake. Harvey O'Connell from the Union came to see me yesterday to see how I was getting along. He says they still miss you down at the plant. All those terrible jokes you used to tell. Katie is still at me to move in with her and Stan in Westfield. Can you imagine me in the suburbs? Away from Hawthorne Street and, and the old neighborhood? Away from you? I just wish she'd get pregnant and let me alone. They're tearing down all those nice old houses on Broom Street. I have a feeling they're headed our way next. I don't know where I'd go if I had to move. I can't picture myself anywhere but in that, in that house. Mrs. Zabenko says I'm getting to be a recluse. I didn't think she even knew the word. She's right, I am. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. I am still mad at you for dying first and leaving me all alone. That wasn't fair. Spencer, how are you feeling this morning? I'm fine, Mrs. Zafanko, and you? I've been better. You been to visit the mister? Where else? Ah, <laughs> the oranges just to come in, fresh. <laughs> also the grapes. Inside, I got some real good of Persian melons. <laughs> if it's so good, who can afford it? Hey, Mom! Hi. 
night. <clears throat> Got your for a cup of coffee? Sure. I'll put on the pot. Mom, the new house is so gorgeous. You've got to come up and see it. There's so much more room than that apartment we had over in Oakhurst. And Stan is going to fix up the basement, turn it into a den rumpus room combined. How's the kitchen? Oh, everything is brand new. Cabinets, counter space, no clutter. I'm going to be able to put away everything I have and still have room. Not like this one, huh? I don't know how you can find anything in this whole house. You know, you still have stuff here from when I was a kid. Look at this. Do you realize when that was done? You did it in the second grade. It's a picture of your father. Ma, why? Why do you keep it? Well, I'll tell you. I thought that one day you would become a famous artist and it would be worth something. It's mine and I like it. Oh, look at this. Boy. This goes back to... To before you were born. Before Frank and I were married. He brought that the day he proposed. He said he couldn't afford champagne. That brewery has been closed for 15 years now. Maybe the bottle's worth something. It is to me. Want some honey? Sure. Excuse me, Mrs. Spencer. Oh, you look like you're going somewhere. Well, I am, Mrs. Spencer. Alaska. I don't know if I can explain this properly. Uh, a couple of hours ago, I was lying up in my room, uh, reading about Point Barrow. And suddenly, I heard this voice seemed to come from inside my head, said, Dolan, don't read about it. Go there. Now's the time. So I packed my clothes and, and I'm going. Oh, well, I, I hear it gets pretty cold up there. Hey, <laughs> I'm ready. First thing in the suitcase was the Long John's. <laughs> well, I... I feel bad about leaving so sudden-like, but... I'm paid up to the end of the month, so maybe by then you can find another border. Oh, that's... that's all right, uh, Mr. Dolan. I, I hope you'll be happy. I think your voice told you a very good thing. It's good to have a, a dream to follow. Well, uh, good luck. Send me a postcard. Well, I will, Mrs. Spencer, and thank you for understanding. Goodbye. Bye. Alaska? Somehow, I can't picture Mr. Dolan up there with all those polar bears. He's been here for two years, ever since your father died. I'm going to have to put an ad in the paper right away. Oh, I hope to heaven I can get another border. I need the extra money. Mom, you don't have to take in borders. Sell the house. Come and live with Stan and me. Katie, when will you understand? This is my home. Mrs. Spencer? Yes. We understand you have a room to rent. What? How could you possibly know? Mom, what is it? These gentlemen want to rent a room. How did you know? It was the strangest thing. We were walking around the neighborhood looking for a place, and we saw this gentleman going down your front steps carrying a suitcase. He said he was going to Alaska. Mr. Dolan. Yeah, you told us about your house. Well, I don't know when I've had a prayer answered so fast. Oh, you do have a room, then? Yes. Room and board, $70 a week. Eat dinner at 5. You have to be finished by 6 because I work. You sound busy. I'm a cleaning lady at the Halstead building. Now, about the room... We'll take it. We haven't even seen it. Oh, we've seen the landlady. That's good enough for us. Well, come on in, then. 
Why don't you clean one of the other offices? This is rather important. Ah, uh, Paul, sorry to keep you waiting. Very cagey, Paul. What did I do now? How old are you? 62. Which you have been for over four months now. You almost slipped by without anybody noticing. Well, I assume when I received no notification that it was being waived in my case. Sorry. No exceptions. Let me ask you something. The day I turned 62, did I suddenly become unfit to do my job? Of course not. But there are rules, and mandatory retirement is a good rule. It makes way for the young people coming up in the company. There's nothing personal about this. That's the problem. Whatever happened to personal? You'll uh, be able to stay on the week, of course, but I'll need to put somebody in here next Monday. I should be able to clean up my office by then. Cheer up. You're going to like retirement. You'll see. You've paid your dues. Now it's time to enjoy yourself. You and Evelyn can enjoy the golden years. My wife, Evelyn, died over a year ago. Then what happened? Nothing. Mr. Tarson went back to his office and just sat there. I think they'll make us retire when we get to be 62. He does that a lot since his wife died. What? Just sits there. I watch him sometimes at night. I don't think he wants to go home. I know how he feels. Did you hear what happened over on 28th Street? They all got their notices to vacate. They're going to tear that block down just like they're doing on Broom Street. How can they make you move if you don't want to sell? The company that's putting up the new condominiums got friends on the city council. They just move right in and condemn the property. Isn't that against the law? They are the law. I got a hunch we're next. Oh, you could be right. What do you think, Helen? I think it's a shame about Mr. Tarson. All right, how you doing? Oh, Mr. Smith. Here, let me take that for you. Thank you. Now, this is really a nice neighborhood. Some people don't think so. I don't see why. No, some people like new, modern stuff. Not the buildings that are important, it's the people. Otherwise, they'd call it a building hood instead of a neighborhood. I like that. Uh, it looks like you got company. Mrs. Spencer? Yes. Richard Collins, Tri-State Realty. I don't want to sell my house. Not even for $50,000? That's a lot of money. You can buy a lot of things for $50,000. I don't want a lot of things. I just want my house. Think about it, Mrs. Spencer. $50,000 now, or 25 when the city takes over and forces you out.
that was all bluff out there, you know. I'm going to lose my home. We moved in here when we were first married. Our daughter, Katie, she was born upstairs, right in that room next to yours. Most everybody I know is, lives in this neighborhood. I'm going to lose my house, and there's not a thing I can do about it. Ah, uh, but there is, Helen. You can fight for it. One person go up against somebody that big? Uh, maybe not one person, but a whole neighborhood's a different story. Helen, why don't you put on a pot of coffee and we'll talk. You want us to go up against Holstead? That's a pretty tall order. Well, so we're starting your own business 9,000 miles from home. Oh, this is my home now, Jonathan. Then how about fighting for it? All right. I'll come to the meeting. I tell you, it can be done. Hey, you crazy. How long have you had this market? 35 years. I buy from my cousin, Luigi. You're willing to throw away 35 years without a fight? Hey, who says I'm going to give up without a fight? <laughs> That's all I wanted to hear. <laughs> My name's Jonathan Smith. I wondered if I could speak to you for a moment. I'm afraid it's a little inconvenient at the moment. Uh, it's very important, please. All right. Thank you. Please, please, sit here, please. Oh, that. I won't take up much of your time. Are you familiar with Halstead's redevelopment project downtown? Of course. I was in on the initial planning stages, feasibility studies, and budgets. And what do you think of it? It's a sound business venture. From whose point of view? Well, in the feasibility study, you never take into consideration the... Oh. Now I know what you're driving at, Mr. Smith. Jonathan. I think you should know that I'm not employed by Halstead anymore. Oh, I know that. Mandatory retirement. That's why I'm here. Look, how would you like to get involved in that project from the other side? Well, I, I, I'm afraid you've lost me. All right, a bunch of us down on Hawthorne Street are going to get together, and we're going to fight Halstead. We've got a meeting tonight around 6 o'clock. We'd like you to join us. No, I don't think that... It'd give you a chance to work again at what you do best. Be a shame to let all that experience go to waste. It'd be a salary, of course. Oh, that's not important. I have a pension which is more than adequate. No, I don't think I'd be interested in your project, Mr. Smith. Well, isn't it better than what you're planning now? What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I think you better leave. Of course. Your wife, Evelyn. How do you think she'd feel about what you're gonna do? If Evelyn were alive, I wouldn't be doing it. Then why don't you go to the cemetery one more time? And talk to her. The gun will still be in the drawer when you get back.
problem? Oh, this darn thing is stuck and it's supposed to be open all the time. Mr. Tarson. You're a... Helen Spencer. I'm on the night cleaning crew. Of course. You're the one who always waits so patiently for me to clean up and leave. Is your wife here? Yes. My husband, too. Are you from this neighborhood? We grew up over on Broom Street. Went to PS 84, Bradford High School, City College. Isn't this strange? The gate is unlocked and it won't open and I'm going to be late for an appointment. I'm meeting with the uh, homeowners over at my place at 6 o'clock. Are you going to fight Halstead? Yes, but how did you know? Well, a young fellow named Jonathan came by and... Jonathan? Yes, he invited me too. Did you know they're planning on moving this cemetery? They're what? Once the buildings go up, they want to turn the cemetery into a small park for the condos. Of course, they'll move everyone. Oh, no, they won't. What in heaven's name made it open? I don't know. Look, maybe I better drop by this meeting. You know, just to see. Oh, good. Let's go. You want us to mortgage our homes so we can invest the money in some scheme. Is that about right? Yes, Mrs. Zabenko, that's about right. Are we crazy? Most of these houses are already paid for. This doesn't work. We all lose our homes. We're going to lose our houses anyway. But at least we'll have some money to show for it. With a plan I have in mind, you'll not only have the money, but you'll also have a say-so in what happens to your homes. Oh. Right, Halstead has offered you $50,000 for each one of your houses. There's approximately, oh, 50 houses in the neighborhood. Collectively, that's two and a half million dollars. We take that two and a half million dollars and we buy stock in Halstead Corporation. Oh, just a minute. You want us to invest in the very people who are trying to throw us out of our homes? That's correct. You see, when you own stock in a corporation, you have a certain amount of say-so in how it operates. The more stock you own, the more say-so you've got. Well, we fight from the inside. I like the sound of it. But what if it goes under? I've seen companies go bankrupt before. Oh, I don't think there's any chance of that happening to Halstead. What do you think, Mr. Tarson? Well, as a matter of fact, you'd probably make money on the deal. However, I, uh, I think you're being optimistic about having a say in how Halstead runs its business. Two and a half million dollars is only a drop in the bucket. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Paul Tarson. He, uh, he's kind of an expert on Halstead Corporation, having worked for him for some 26 years. Uh, you uh, ain't with him no more? No, I just recently retired. Does this mean you might be joining us? I think this would be far more preferable than my other plan. Okay. So, we have to figure out a way to get Halstead to give you more money for your homes. Oh, you can do that? I think so. But first, I'd like to see a show of hands. Find out how many of you are interested in the plan. Hey, let's give it a shot. Even get Hollister to come up with a better offer. I say he knows what he's talking about. All right. How are we going to get them to give us more money for our homes? Very simple, Mrs. Zabenko. We give them a fair shake. <laughs>
the whole block, both sides of the street. And at every place, he offered $150,000 for the building. That's uh, three times more than we offered. What do you think he's up to? He could be thinking about putting up a group of competing units and uh, riding in on our coattails. I'm thinking the same thing. And we can't afford to let that happen. Go the 151, but throw up every building on the block. That's a lot of money, Mr. Crawford. Unless you have a better plan, Colin, spend it. We need that block. $151,000. I'm rich. Yeah, just put in the pile, Zabenko. Oh, now we buy stock in Halstead. I think Paul has a better idea. I was afraid of this. Now we're going to lose all our money. Not if we're smart. When I left Halstead, they were in the process of taking over some smaller companies. Now, when that happens, the price of the smaller company stock goes way up. So we buy stock in the small company. Hollister takes it over, and we make money on their work. <laughs> Which company? That's the problem. I know they were considering three separate organizations when I left, but the board kept it very secret. Paul, is there any way of finding out? No. Security's very tight about that. What we need is an insider. And we've got him. Who? You, Helen. And you, Mrs. Savenko. What are you talking about? Trash. Trash? Trash. Is this it? I hope. It's almost six o'clock in the morning. Oh, we wanted to be sure that we got every single scrap of paper. Oh, that's us, finicky cleaning people. Finicky, schminicky, trash is trash. It all goes on the truck. See you in the morning. in charge of the kitchen. Now, you open each bag separately. If you see anything pertaining to business, you put it on the cardboard box on the table. Mother, what is going on They've here? They've explained it to you in the kitchen. Paul, have you found anything yet? No, nothing yet. What are you waiting for? Get a move on. Darling, if you're not here to work, just give us a kiss. Goodbye. Paul, let's check the kitchen. Exactly what is it we're looking for? A memo, most likely. Probably referring to a company with a made-up type name. Electronics would be a very good bet. You mean like Electrocom? Exactly. As a matter of fact, Electrocom would be just the kind of... Let me see that. This is it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, please. 
let me sit down, will you? I'm shaking like a leaf. Oh, shh. Now, how did it go? I bought up every share of electric comp that was available. I got it between two and two and three eighths. At 10 o'clock, the stock went crazy. The word was out on the floor that Halstead was going to acquire it. Hey, sounds good to me. Good. That's incredible. The stock closed at six and a quarter. Oh. <laughs> well, I wonder how the word leaked out. Halstead is usually very good about security on things like that. I think I should have to say it was heaven sent. <clears throat> I hate to sound like a broken record, but if you all make a lot of money, why not take it and go live wherever you choose? We are, dear. You are? Yes, we're going to live right here. <laughs> Did you read it? Electrocomp, our stock went through the roof. Did you hear me? I said... We know, Mrs. Zabenko. Paul is already out. He's buying up the Halstead stock with the money. But Halstead is going down. We know, Mrs. Zabenko. We sell a stock that's going up to buy a stock that's going down. Well... If my figures are correct, we now have a working control of Halstead Corporation. Oh. oh, excuse me. I know we made a lot of money on this stock deal, but control Halstead? That's a multi-billion dollar corporation. I said a working control, Mr. Yoga. You see, with a corporation as large as Halstead, that means we have the voting rights of slightly over 6% of the stock. Well, that doesn't seem like very much. It isn't until you understand that nobody has any more than that. That's right. But the important thing is we keep this all quiet until the stockholders' meeting. We don't want to tip off anybody at Halstead. What's going on here? Foster, get in here. Yes, sir. What's going on here? You mean, uh, Electrocomp, sir? Yes, I mean Electrocomp. Somebody leaked the story. How many shares did we purchase? Purchase? Yes, purchase. Well, sir, you didn't want the buy orders to begin to tomorrow, sir. What? Do you realize what this has cost us? Do you? Yes, sir. I want you to find the man responsible for leaking this information. You understand? Do you? Yes, sir. I want you to bug all the offices. Yes, sir. Now get out of here. Yes, sir. Wait! All right. But we do. We're going to start to buy Electrocomp tomorrow. Sell Halstead and buy Electrocomp. But, sir, Electrocomp closed at six and a quarter. We started buying... I don't care! Once we push the merger through, we can name our own price on Electrocomp. Mr. Crawford, I'm not so sure that's a wise... Just do it. Yes, sir. I feel useful again, Evelyn. You know, I didn't think it could work at first, but now, I don't know, it's, it, it's made me feel that I, I want to live again. And you'd be so proud of the old neighborhood. I didn't realize how much I missed. Oh, I'm sorry. I saw you over here, and I... Oh, that's all right. I, uh... It's, I, I guess it seems a little silly talking to a grave. Oh, I hope not. I do it all the time. You do? Oh, yes. When you've been with someone a very long time, you want to share your thoughts with them. I think he hears me, too. So do I when I talk to Evelyn. After all, she's the only one I have to talk to. Well, I don't want to intrude on your privacy. Helen. Would you like to have some dinner? Yes. Yes, I would. Almost finished? Oh, this is the end of it. Oh, I can't wait to see the looks on the faces of the board when we tell them we control the company. I still don't understand it. I believe it, but I don't understand it. This Paul is a genius. Yes, he is. Helen, what is that look in your eye? What look? What do you mean, what look? I know a look when I see a look. Come on, let's go. All right, all right. <laughs>
I can't get over it. A couple of cleaning ladies telling the Halstead Corporation what to do. Only in America. Only in America. on the faces of the board and we tell them we control the company. I just don't understand it. I believe it, but I don't understand it. This all is a genius. Kevin, what is that look in your eyes? Watch it look. Uh, what do you yes, mean, sir. Uh, Mr. Crawford? I know a look when I see a I look. I found the leak. On, let's go. I think you better call a meeting. I can't get over it. A couple of cleaning ladies telling the Holstead Corporation what to do. Is that everything? Everything so far, sir. Gentlemen, we have a major problem. Foster, why don't you spell it out? Yes, sir. Well, as you know, we've agreed to purchase all of the houses on Hawthorne Street for $151,000. Uh, to make a long story short, the homeowners have borrowed against the guarantee of purchase and bought a massive amount of stock in Electrop. And uh, then they sold high and bought shares in Halstead. You said you were going to make it short. Uh, yes, sir. What it boils down to, sir, is that uh, they now control 6.3% of Halstead. And as a group, that gives them controlling interest. Why would a bunch of people get together and take a chance like that? To save their crummy houses, that's why. They'd like to put a stop to the whole development. And now they can? Yes, now. But not 90 days from now. Gentlemen, I have the solution. We invite them to a board meeting, and we surrender. We drop all development immediately, completely. What kind of a plan is that? Let me finish. As of now, we as a group buy stock options in Halstead until we have sufficient holdings to go beyond that 6.3%. And where do we get the cash to uh, cover those options? We sell Electrocomp. After the merger is complete, of course. You see, they don't know anything about our business, and their only concern is in the neighborhood. So at the end of 90 days, we're back in control, and we reinstate the project. All in favor, say aye. 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 We're in control. They want to meet with us. We know. We're on our way now to the meeting. Only in America. Hey, Paul. Why don't you ride up in front with me? Somebody they go to know before the meeting. See, we're all here. Paul, congratulations. You did an amazing job for these people. I suppose. For an old guy. Yes. Well, this shouldn't take too much time, I'm sure. You have won. We are withdrawing all plans to develop Hawthorne Street. Your homes will remain intact. That's what you wanted, and that's what you got. <laughs> True. Well, now, if we're all in agreement, let's proceed with business as usual. Not quite. There is one other item. Oh. <laughs> 
Yes, Paul, I was going to mention that. You are definitely welcome back with us. That wasn't the other item. Well, what then? Electrocomp. What about it? Our group has decided not to let Halstead have it. That's ridiculous. We did a lot of research on this acquisition. So did we. And we don't want it. Well, Electrocom stock will collapse when this is announced. Yes. And you will be stuck with all those stock options you can't exercise. You knew. How in heaven did you find out? Exactly. The point is, we found out. Now, here is our offer. Our group will buy all your Electrocom stock if you call a stockholder meeting and resign from the board, recommending our group to take your place. You must be kidding. An old man and a bunch of night maids running Halstead. Oh, shut up, Crawford. They've got us. All those in favor say aye. 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 We won! We actually won! Oh, Mrs. Tobago, it was all your lovely drive. <laughs> oh, we get to keep our own. Frank, we did it. We won. Now you won't have to move, and neither will we. I'm on the board now. I have my own office. Of course, I clean it myself. Old habits die hard. Frank, I'm going to be all right now. You can stop worrying. And I want you to know I'm not angry with you anymore. Frank, I want you to meet Paul. His wife, Evelyn, is here, too. She's right by that great big maple over there. He's a very nice man and a dear friend. You'll like him. <laughs>